The question I get every day is, doctor, why don't my pills work? In fact, I got this question nearly 10 times yesterday from patients that I work with on a one-on-one -on -one basis and also some of my coaching clients. So let's walk through the issues that surround this problem. And what I'm talking about primarily is the erectile dysfunction medications. The take-home point is that it's not 100%. There are a variety of things that go into the equation, such as a person's underlying physiology, their health problems, what their diet's like, particularly the inflammatory Western diet, has a huge impact on the health of blood vessels. And that's what sexual health is primarily about in terms of erections, is vascular physiology. Sleep, sleep plays a huge role in hormonal balance, stress, recovery, and other things that I've talked about in previous videos and podcast episodes. And then also medications. There are a variety of chronic medications that people take for example, blood pressure medications, antidepressants, and other things that can affect how well or how poorly erectile dysfunction medications work. So those are all factors. There are a number of other Me Too type medications, but the ones that are more common or most well known would be sildenafil, which is the active generic ingredient in Viagra. Viagra's been around for a very long time. Some of the others that you can find on the market are Stendra, Levitra, Staxin, and Cialis. Out of all of these, Cialis is the most long-acting of the medications, and that's in part somewhat responsible for its popularity, but also the fact that it works in regards to prostate health and urination issues, so it has sort of a, a double benefit there. This is a huge issue of frustration. Many men will try a medication once or twice, maybe not follow the instructions uh, to the T, and then they're left with uh, frustration, disappointment, their partner's disappointed, and uh, they feel you know all the emotional things that go along with that. Inadequate, like a failure, wondering what's wrong with them, and there are a variety of, of mental things that sort of fuel and funnel into the uh, sexual health and performance equation. A few take-home points here. The key with the sildenafil or Viagra-like medications is that it needs to be taken on an empty stomach. And what I tell uh, people in general is take it, you know, at least an hour, maybe an hour and a half before a meal, or if you, a person ends up eating, try to wait at least about two hours afterwards. And the reason being is that that's about how long it takes for the stomach to empty. Fat in the diet and foods in general can bind up the sildenafil and make it unpredictable or ineffective and so oftentimes men will you know be on a date or a special night and they'll eat and take the medication and it doesn't work and they're frustrated and they think that there's something wrong with the pill or they're concerned that maybe their physiology's changed and and they're frustrated their partner's frustrated uh, separation from other medications depending on what they are is a key and that's something to discuss with the prescribing provider they'll give you some clear guidelines on when it should be taken and what it should not be taken with Alcohol is another huge one. The way these medications work is through nitric oxide, which sort of dilates and increases blood flow. But alcohol also has a vasodilation effect, and so the combination of the two together can be detrimental. I get men who say that they took it while they had a few beverages and it didn't work, or they felt lightheaded or dizzy. Worst case scenario, you know, the perfect storm, medications, alcohol, uh, ED medications, and the person gets lightheaded, dizzy, or potentially passes out. And there are also unique factors. Uh, just because a medication worked last year doesn't necessarily mean it'll work this year or tonight, and I'll get into that here in just a moment. It's also important to understand that there's a range. Uh, a lot of men will ask me, well, what's normal? Well, normal is, is based on a, a bell curve, if you will. There are outliers on either end, so some people need just a tiny bit even 20 milligrams maybe too much, and other people on the other end are maxed out on the medication and it's not getting uh, the results that they want and we need to add something else or look at some other health or physiologic contributors. And depending on the medication we're talking about, whether it's sildenafil versus Viagra versus uh, Cialis or Tadalafil, they are packaged and, and made differently. And so, you know, I have patients that are trying to see if they could take, you know, a significant higher dose of Cialis then is recommended because they took the max dose of 
Viagra, and it's comparing apples to oranges. You know, 100 milligrams of Viagra is not the same as 100 milligrams of Tadalafil. In fact, that's not even a recommended dose. 20 milligrams is the maximum dose for Cialis. And uh, patients can get into trouble when they try to be uh, manipulative of the, the dosage or play pharmacist or doctor themselves. So I encourage you definitely to discuss this with your providing provider in terms of uh, safety and maximum range. And as I always ask, one size does not fit everybody. You might consider some labs, and you might also consider some underlying health issues that might feed into this. So don't rely on just the simple Band-Aid approach that uh, a pill will fix everything. There are a variety of other issues that need to be explored and looked at. So consider testosterone, cholesterol, inflammatory markers. Also look at underlying issues. Realize that the artery to the penis is very tiny, much smaller than the arteries to the heart. And it can be the canary in the coal mine, if you will. Not always, but it can be. And so it's certainly worthwhile to look at some heart or cardiovascular risk factors. Keep in mind that you are not alone. More men suffer with this issue, and women as well, that we realize people are often reluctant or shy to talk about this. And Although this is geared towards men, this presentation, obviously there's uh, two people in the equation here, whether it's uh, you know a wife, a spouse, a significant other, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, it doesn't matter. Keep in mind that you are not alone and you, you don't need to go through this alone. Be sure to talk to your partner and uh, get the support that you deserve and need. The end result is to provide you with the results that you're looking for, a satisfying relationship, happiness for you and your partner, and your provider, your healthcare practitioner, your doctor, nurse practitioner, PA, whoever is helping you, your urologist, whatever, are there to help you. So be sure to ask the questions. It might be uncomfortable at first, but you'll get over it, trust me. Unfortunately, there's a variety of online telemedicine solutions that make the discussion much less uncomfortable for many men. So as always, I hope you have a fantastic week. Let me know if you have questions. Um, the video is on YouTube. If you're listening to this on the podcast, uh, you can check out the slide deck on my YouTube channel as well. Take care.